Floating point arithmetic is no different than what you've done in base 10, where you've multiplied scientific notation, except that our base is now going to be 2 instead of 10. So let's take a look at our learning objectives. We're going to be able to add, subtract, and multiply two IEEE 74 numbers together without converting their bases and understand scientific notation in base 2. So generally how this is going to be presented to you is I will give you two IEEE 74 numbers. And remember, they're in hex. And so if you have eight hex digits, that tells you it's a 32-bit float. If you have 16 hex digits, it tells you it's a 64-bit float. And so whenever you get those, you decode them into their base 2 equivalents. You multiply them, subtract, add, whatever it needs to be, and then you give the result back in IEEE 74. And the reason we're doing this is because we're seeing what the computer has to go through to be able to add, subtract, and multiply, and even divide. And that is why floating point arithmetic inside the computer is so much more intensive. It takes on an order of 22 cycles or something like that of the computer to be able to do floating point arithmetic versus integer arithmetic. And that's why generally if we can get away with it, we do integer arithmetic instead of floating point arithmetic. So in addition, let's take a look at a base 10 number. Just to recap this, now we've all learned most of this in elementary school, but let's just recap what we're doing here. So if I had 1.2 times 10 to the first, and then I had 1.7 times 10 squared, and I wanted to add these two numbers together, I couldn't until the powers were the same. Because the way addition works is we want to line up the decimal points. It looks like these two decimal points line up, but since we have two different powers of 10, they don't line up. Now we can go to 10 to the first, or we can go 10 to the second, just as long as they're the same. So to go to 10 to the second, we're going to move the decimal to the right and that will give us 10 to the first. So it's 1.2 and 1.7 decimal 0 times 10 to the first times 10 to the first. Okay, so this is the same number except now we're doing 10 to the first. Now if to double check that we see 1 decimal 7 times 10 squared we'd move the decimal to the right two places that'd be 170. So now we have 17 decimal 0 times 10 to the first that means move the decimal to the right one place that's 170. So these are equivalent numbers. And so now we line up the decimal point, we take down the exponent, because now they match, and then we add. So 18.2 times 10 to the first. And so let's double check that. So this is 12, and this is 170, right? Okay, and that gives us 182. And then 1, 8 decimal 2 times 10 to the first is 182. So that checks out. So that's how scientific notation works in addition and for subtraction. Essentially what we want to do is we want to make sure the powers are the same and line up the decimal point, then add. So we can do the exact same thing in base 2. So in base 2, what we're going to do is something like 1 decimal 110 times 2 to the third plus 1 decimal 110 times 2 to the first, okay? So remember, step one is to make sure that the powers are the same. Now we can either go to the three, to the one, or we can move them both to two. Just as long as the powers are the same, we don't change the magnitude of the number, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna go two to the first, so one, two. So I'm gonna do two powers, so that'll be two to the first. So that's one, 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 decimal zero. One, decimal, one, one, zero. Times two to the first, times two to the first. Okay, so we drop down the power and then we just add 0, 1, 1 decimal. So that's 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1. Uh oh, my camera's in front of it. There we go. 0, carry the 1. Okay, now since it's 2 to the first, what we generally want to do is we want to renormalize our number. So let's rewrite our number up here. So it's 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so this looks like any other decimal that we have, So, and that's 2 to the first. Now remember, whenever we convert this into IEEE 74, what we have to do is we have to normalize it first. So we're going to move the decimal point over 1, 2, 3 places. So it's 1 decimal 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 times 2 to the fourth. Okay, so now we have a normalized notation. We have an exponent, and then what we're going to do is we're going to copy all the information. Now if you don't remember, the information we need is the sign, the exponent, and the fraction. So the sign is positive, the exponent is 4, but remember we have to add the bias, which is 127, so that's 131, and finally we have our fraction, which is everything to the right of the 1, so that's 00011. 
Okay, and then the rest are going to be zeros. So remember the sign is one bit, the exponent's eight bits, and then the fraction is 23 bits. And so that gives us our, our number that we want. The sign comes first. So 131 is 128 plus three, right? So sign comes first, then we have 128, 64's place, 32's place, 16's place, eight's place, four's place, two's place, one's place, and then the fraction is zero, 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 one, one. Okay, and then we just pad it with zeros all the way up to 32 bits. Then remember what we do is we group this in groups of four so we can convert it into hex. And there we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is convert this into hex. That's a four, that's a one, that's an eight. That is 12, so that's a C, one, two, three, four. So 418C, zero, 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 zero. That's going to be our hex number. That's going to be a result of this. So you can see there's a lot that goes to it. We just have to keep track of our numbers. But for addition and subtraction, there's really no magic to this. We match the exponents and we perform the arithmetic on them. And so that's how we're going to do addition. Multiplication is a little bit easier because we don't actually have to match exponents. Instead, we add the exponents. So let's take a look at an example. Let's do 17, which is one decimal seven times 10 to the first. And let's do 10, which is, let's do 0 0.10 times 10 squared. There we go. So now in this case, remember, we don't have to keep track of the decimal point. We don't have to line them up and we don't have to do anything with the exponents except add them. So that's 10 to the third. Now we pretend like these decimal points don't exist. I'm not going to erase them just so that we can keep track of where they are. And basically what we do is we multiply as if it's 17 over 10. So zero, then we're going to add the zero here. We have one times seven is seven. One times one is one. Okay, we add them together, we get 170 times 10 to the third. And then what we do is we count the number of decimal places to the right of each decimal. So there's one, two, and three. So we go one, two, and three. So that's 170 points times 10 to the third. Now if we were to look at that, 1.7 times 10 to the first, that's 17. 0.10 times 10 squared is 10 that equals 170. Let's take a look at our number. If we're gonna move that over by three places, we go one, two, and three, that gives us the value 170. So that checks out. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So step one, we don't, we just add the exponents. Step two, we ignore the decimal point while we're doing our multiplication. And then step three is we count the number of decimal points to the right of each decimal. So how many digits are to the right of the decimal? And that's the number of places we need to move the decimal to the left. And so that's how multiplication is going to work in base 10. Same thing happens in base 2. So let's take 1 decimal 0, 1, 1 times 2 to the first times 1 decimal 0, 1, 1 times 2 squared. Okay, so those are def different numbers, but let's take a look at what we're going to do. So once again, we add the exponents and then we multiply as if there is no decimal. So we just keep a mental note that there's six decimal digits here, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then we just multiply. So that's one, one, zero, one, add our zero, one, one, zero, one, add a zero, two zeros, and all that's zeros, add three zeros, and then we have one, one, zero, one. Okay, so then when we add them together, we get one, zero, carry the one, zero carry the one, one carry the one, one carry the one, one, one. Okay, so that's times two to the third, and then remember we have to move the decimal point over six places. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in that case we get one decimal one, 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 zero, zero, one, times two to the third. Okay, when we do that, times two to the third, we move the decimal place over to the right three places. Okay, so that's how we do multiplication in base two. There really is no difference in how we, how we perform this operation, except that we add the exponents and then we calculate the decimal place when we're done. Now remember inside of what we did inside of computers is we always multiply with positive numbers. And that's gonna be the same here because once again, just like in binary arithmetic, we can look at the sign after we're done and then figure out what the sign is of the result. Because if we had, if we multiply two positives together, we get a positive. If we multiply two negatives together, we get a positive. Everything else, if their signs are mixed, then we get a negative number. And that's essentially what's going to happen here. So last, let's take a look at how we're going to subtract two numbers. So if we're going to subtract two numbers, remember we add the two's complement. So the same thing is going to happen here. We do one decimal one, 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 zero times two to the third, 
one dec I'm sorry, that's not a times, it's a subtraction. Minus one, 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 zero times two squared, okay? So remember, we're going to use two's complement here to add a negative number. But before we do that, remember the step one is to match exponents. So I'm gonna match the exponent here to two. So we want this to be two times two, so we go one, one, decimal one, one, minus one, decimal one, 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 zero, times two squared, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to add, or we're going to drop down the exponent, so that's squared. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the two's complement of the bottom number. If you don't remember the two's complement, it's flip all the bits, add one. So what we're gonna do is flip all the bits. So let's recopy the top number. Then let's flip all the bits, one, zero, decimal, zero, 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 one times two squared, and then we're going to add one to that. Now to add one to it, we get one zero decimal zero zero one zero times two squared, okay? So let's recopy this number over here on the left, one one decimal one one zero zero times two squared plus one zero decimal zero zero one zero times two squared, okay? So now that's our two's complement number, and we're going to add them, so zero, one, 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 zero, carry the one, okay? And our decimal point drops down here, times two squared, okay? So whenever we look at this, that's going to be one, zero, one, move the decimal place over two places, and that gives us this number right here, okay? So remember, whenever we add two's complement, nothing ever carried, so we know this is going to be a positive number, and that sort of makes sense, because with times 10 to the square, we see that this is a bigger number than this one down here. And so that is how we're going to subtract two numbers. All we do is take the two's complement. So when we took the two's complement, look how we didn't even care about the decimal. We just took it as one big cohesive number. And then we subtracted the two from each other, okay? And so that's essentially what you have to do. Remember, whenever we take the two's complement inside the computer, there are no decimal points. And so we take all the bits that we have available, we flip all the zeros to ones, all the ones to zeros, and then we add one. And so many students think that we just do the two's complement on the left-hand side of the decimal point. That's not correct. So we wanna make sure, so cover the decimal with your finger or something like that. Do the two's complement so that the decimal doesn't distract you from anything. And just think of it as a long sequence of zeros and ones. And then whenever you add one, put the decimal point back in into the new number, and then add as usual. That's how you add a negative number. So we covered how to add floating point, which is just scientific notation in base two. We covered how to subtract in base two by just taking the two's complement of the second number. Remember once again, just imagine that that decimal point isn't there or that the times two to whatever power isn't there and just take the two's complement. And then finally with multiplication, we add the exponents. We ignore the decimal while we're multiplying until we're done. So in multiplication, we can figure a lot of things out after we're done by the result. So we look at the two operands and see whether they're positive or negative. That tells us whether the result's positive or negative. So in multiplication, we always multiply positive numbers. We add the exponents and we don't worry about the decimal point until the end. So remember, whenever we add the exponents in multiplication, we look to see how many places we're going to move the decimal point to the left by looking at the number of decimal points on the right-hand side of the decimal, right? So whenever we look at the operands, so say example, we were multiplying on this one, even though it's subtraction, how many decimal points do we have amongst these two numbers? Well, we have one, two, three, four here, one, two, three, four here. So whenever we're done with multiplication, we'd have to move the decimal point to the left eight places. So that's how you multiply, add, and subtract IEEE 754 numbers, which is essentially scientific notation in base two. Thanks for watching.